Hi and welcome to yet another tutorial on Hibernate. Uh, in the previous tutorials, we have learned how to write entity classes. We have learned how to map the associations between entity classes. And uh, we learned the different relationships in the associations. Now, in this tutorial and in the subsequent couple of tutorials, we're going to look at another important factor uh, when it comes to object relational mapping. And uh, the thing that we're going to talk about is inheritance. Inheritance is uh, is one of the important features of any object-oriented programming, and uh, it is very specific to object-oriented programming. You don't have an equivalent of inheritance in a relational model. So this is quite a challenge for any object-relational mapping tool to uh, implement, which is mapping your uh, inheritance of your classes to a relational table. How would the mapping happen? Um, let's take an example of uh, a vehicle class. This is something that we had used in our earlier tutorial, but uh, we're going to expand on the vehicle part of uh, the inheritance. We're going to look at a vehicle base class and we will inherit this class into a few other uh, specific vehicle classes like say, uh, you know, a two wheeler and a four wheeler. So let's say I have this vehicle class and then I extend this vehicle class to create a two wheeler vehicle class and uh, a four wheeler vehicle class. So these two classes inherit from this main vehicle class. Now let's say I have objects of vehicle, I have objects of two wheeler and I have objects of four wheeler in my application. Now, how would I save the data inside these objects to uh, tables in you know in the database. How would Hibernate map this and how I can configure this is something that we're going to look at. Now, first of all, why do we need inheritance mapping? Say I have I have different classes. Say I have extended uh, the vehicle class to implement a two wheeler and a four wheeler. So these two are two separate classes. Now, why don't I just mark them as entity as well? and save them with separate tables. That should work because uh, no matter what the inheritance is of these uh, classes, they are separate classes as such and you can mark them as entities. So why not do that? Why bother about inheritance? To understand the need for uh, mapping inheritance, let's take this example. Uh, I have an abstract vehicle class and uh, this class has uh, ID, name, and the license number of the vehicle. We are saving this information in the vehicle class. Now I have two classes that extend this vehicle class. I have a two-wheeler class and a four-wheeler class. Now the two-wheeler class has an extra property called the steering handle, and the four-wheeler class has a steering wheel. Now this is my base abstract class. I'm not gonna have objects of this class. I will have objects of either the two-wheeler class or the four-wheeler class and I'll want to persist them both. So one option is, as we said earlier, we can mark these two classes as entities and a two-wheeler class will go to a separate table and a four-wheeler class will go to a separate table, which is fine. We can just use that to persist the data. But uh, there are a couple of problems here. Since we're talking about inheritance, what is the one coolest feature of inheritance provided by Java? It is polymorphism. Now let's say I have a user, user object, and this user object has a reference to a vehicle class, and I want to poly, you know, I want to dynamically assign either a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler object to the user class. So I have a reference to a vehicle, say something like this. Now this vehicle is a placeholder for both the two-wheeler and the four-wheeler, I can assign any one of these objects over here. And I wouldn't know until runtime what it's going to be. Now the problem is, say I want to persist this uh, user class and it has a reference to, say, a two-wheeler. Now when I'm saving this user class to the database, how would I map out this relationship? Say I have, I have three tables here. One is the user, user table, one is a two-wheeler table, and one is a four-wheeler table. Now what will be the foreign key here. What ID will I save here? Will I save the ID of the two-wheeler or will I save the ID of the four-wheeler? I cannot um, I cannot have a foreign key relationship to both. I have to choose one table and it's not possible because I have a vehicle class here. It could be either vehicle. It could be, you know, if the user object that I'm trying to save has uh, owns a two-wheeler, 
then this would be a reference to the two wheeler table where I have saved the two wheeler uh, data. And if these, if this user object has a four wheeler, then when I'm saving this, I will have to have a reference to the, the record in the four wheeler table. So this is where it gets tricky. I have, uh, you know, a, a base class that's implemented in my user object. And I want to save the relationship dynamically. And I want to use the feature of polymorphism. I cannot do that if I have you know, I treat this as two separate entities. I need to tell Hibernate that, okay, this is an inheritance that's happening here and we need to map this differently. Uh, this is this is one uh, reason why you would want to implement inheritance. The second reason is say, for example, I change this vehicle class later on and I add a different uh, field here. What would happen is uh, thanks to the Java inheritance, these two classes would automatically get that field added. But uh, when it comes to the database, you would still have uh, only these uh, columns since you're treating this as a separate object and a separate table. Uh, whatever changes you make here will not get propagated. You would have to do this manually. So considering all these, if you have a strong implementation of inheritance and you're utilizing all the features of inheritance that Java provides like polymorphism and dynamic assignment of objects and all those things, then it's a good idea to uh, you know implement the hibernate feature of inheritance and uh, use the you know the the functionalities that hibernate provides for us when it comes to inherited classes so having said that let's have a look at how we can implement inheritance there are uh, there are a few options that we have when we can uh, map inherited classes and uh, the option that we can uh, you know option that we need to choose to implement depends on specific scenarios so we're going to have a look at that so we'll start with writing um, these three classes, which is the vehicle, the two-wheeler, and the four-wheeler. And uh, we will not specify any inheritance mapping, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I will retain this uh, the base vehicle class. Uh, I won't make this as an abstract because I would I want to demonstrate something else here. So I will treat this as an entity class itself for now, and uh, I will write two classes that will extend this vehicle class. So this, this is fairly simple. I have removed all the other extra stuff that we had going in our previous examples. So it just has uh, a generated ID, vehicle ID, and it has a simple vehicle name property. That's that's there to it. There's nothing else here. So we'll keep it simple. So these are the two um, fields in my uh, vehicle class, and uh, I've mapped this as an entity. So without doing anything else, uh, Hibernate is gonna treat this as a separate entity, and it's gonna create a table for this. Now what I'll do is I will create two new classes. I will uh, you know, create the two-wheeler and the four-wheeler, which will extend this uh, vehicle class. So I'll start with the two-wheeler, and uh, the super class is gonna be vehicle. say finish. Now this extends vehicle. Now what I'll do is I'll have um, I'll have another field here. Call this the private string steering handle. Um, a two-wheeler has uh, a handlebar while a four-wheeler has a uh, steering wheel. So I'll just have that as a demarcation here and uh, generate getters and setters for this. Okay, now I'll save this. Similarly, I will also generate a four-wheeler. Again, I'm extending vehicle, finish. Okay, now I have the getters and setters for this as well. Now, what happens if I just, let me see if this guy is well. So what happens if I just mark this as an entity and uh, let, let Hibernate implement this as separate entities? Of course, I'll have to import from Java X persistence. I don't have an ID here uh, because it's inheriting 
from vehicle. Entity again, and I will import this as well. Okay, now if I just try to persist these two um, these two objects, then there is something that Hibernate does by uh, default. I'll just uh, demonstrate that with a simple example, and uh, later we'll see why that's happening. So I have a new vehicle. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll I'll create a new two wheeler as well. Okay, let me remove user. We don't need that. Now what I'll do is I'll create a four wheeler as well. Okay, so now I have uh, a vehicle object. I have a bike object. I have a car object. So I have a vehicle, two wheeler, and four wheeler. Now all the three are entities. There is nothing that we have mentioned to hibernate to tell that we want to implement inheritance, even though the two wheeler and four wheeler are both inheriting from this vehicle. So now what I'll do is I'll save uh, the vehicle, the bike, and the car. So I will use a session dot save works fine. And I will comment the transaction so that it gets saved. And uh, there's one other thing which we'll have to do, which is uh, go to the configuration and add those two mapping classes as well. Okay, now we are all set. So now what happens if I run this? How is Hypernate going to create the tables? Now look at what's happening. We have a vehicle table. It's not created any other table. It's created just one table called the vehicle. And now it has saved the vehicle name the vehicle ID and it has created something as a column called as a D type. Okay. And uh, what's happened is it's also inserting the steering handle and the steering wheel into the same table. It's not created two separate tables, even though we have marked this as an entity and the other one, the two wheeler also as an entity, even though they have been marked as entities, it's not created two separate tables. Instead, what it has done is it has mapped everything to the base class table itself, to the vehicle. Now the vehicle itself has the steering handle and the steering wheel properties. Note that this steering handle was defined in a subclass of vehicle, which was the two-wheeler. And this steering wheel was defined in a subclass of vehicle, which was the four-wheeler. Now, Hibernate has by default implemented a strategy for inheritance called as a single table strategy, which means that no matter what your inheritance strategy is, inheritance hierarchy is, it will create one common table for all the objects. Say you have, uh, you, you know, you take, you have a Porsche class, which actually implements the four wheeler uh, class that you have and the Porsche has a separate column for it. What it'll do is it'll also add that column to this vehicle table. So all your children, all your child classes, whatever vehicles they, I mean, whatever columns they have, it's all gonna be added to one common table for the base class, which is this vehicle table. And depending on whether, see for, for this bike row, now the bike has a steering wheel, I mean the steering uh, handle. So the steering handle value has been added for this bike record. Now the Porsche has a steering wheel. So the steering wheel value has been added for the, for the Porsche record. So for all the bike records that get saved into this vehicle table, you will not have any value for the steering wheel. And for all the car records that gets added to this vehicle table, you won't have any value for the steering handle. So the two wheeler records will have only the steering handle which has been declared in that class. And the four wheeler records will have only the steering wheel value, which has been declared for that.